Well, good evening or good morning. I don't know where you are, but you're listening to us, so you've got good taste. Welcome to what the fuck are we doing? I it, it, yeah, I story of my life. <laughs> um, it's Karina, yeah, the co-host. Uh, tonight, I know it's been a while since we posted anything, but you know, lives are getting busy. Um, but tonight, your host. Your exquisite host. Oh wow! I oh, look at that. Look at me and my it's words. Because, it's because I'm making coffee. That's why. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. We'll be running the show tonight, so I also don't know what she's talking about. So I will be hearing it for the first time. Like you guys, my ears are virgins at this moment. So the microphone is yours, lady. Continue. All right. So. I'm going to make a cock up again because I'm reading. As you guys like, no, every single time we need to read something. It's a, it's a, like a complete fuck up. Um, when we read it from the computer, when we read it from paper, it's fine. But the moment it's on the screen, we're just like, what? Like, I know for a fact I'm going to go, dude, big word. Like, help me with this. I know that's going to happen. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, seeing as we've been sticking with, like, paranormal shit for the past couple of shows, I'm going to continue with that little theme that we've got going on. We've had some pretty, like, stormy weather, so the weather would have been perfect if, um, you know... If we decided to do this, like, two nights ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, life happened. So, I don't know, like, we recently we watched this movie again, so we fucking love this movie. I mean, it's it's a fucking classic, and it's it's is so it, creepy. Is it, is it 13 guys? Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. So, I mean, like, the first time I watched this, and this was re- released in 2001, um, so it's, it's fucking old for everyone who was Does born your, after that. Do your parents know that you watched this? I was, like, I don't know, eight when I watched exactly, this. Exactly, that's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> really not, so I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't do that when they're there. <laughs> Fuck, okay, Fuck. never mind. Um, so, I mean, like, I've always been curious of, like, if this was based on, like, actual people or if... It's just some random crap they made up for the movie. So I'm going to read the supposed backstories to the ghosts that they have or that they feature in the movie. Um, and apparently it was a remake. Uh, I didn't know that there was an original. So we can, we're, just going, yeah, we're just going to try and find the original. So it says here, I have to admit, part of the remake 2001 movie, 13 Ghosts, totally hit the mark for me. I think the single scariest scene I've ever seen in a movie was the junkyard scene where they're trying to capture the juggernaut. No, Something, no, 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 it wasn't. no, 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 no. Like, have What's you seen that? the fucking jackal? And I mean, bro, we go, come on. Then we grab the chick and I'm just like, oh, just not get even, out. Not even that part, like, where he, he, like, storms the dad, like, in the corner. He's just, like, gashing his back open. Mm. It's fucking hectic. Like, his face just isn't... I it's can't a even. I can't. Um, so, okay, well, something about setting a trap for a huge, seriously evil ghost that can't be seen is shivery scary and I'd all junkyard so the location was wickedly grim as well okay this is not me adoring junkyard this is the person who actually posted this article if i can put it like such <laughs> imagine that <laughs> so what's your kink no oh, you know junkyards <laughs> what are you doing this weekend um so the ultimate horror always occurs in darkness and the unseen i don't want to know what it is that's viewing the hero or heroine as prey. I think the movies like The Haunting, The Changeling, Stra- The Strangers, and most of all Jeepers Creepers is being tormented by the unknown. The Changeling was fucking good. No, I don't know if you saw no, that. The Strangers. I actually haven't seen that. Uh-uh. uh-uh I think I might uh, have, though. It's like, have you never seen it? I don't know. It's this couple, they're at a wedding, and then they live in one, someone's Ow, house. Oh, was my watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then they sleep over in someone's house, like, but I don't I can't remember if it's somewhere in the woods or it's not, but it's in a, it looks like an abandoned street. Mm. And then this chick comes to the door and she asks, I can't remember the other chick's name, but she's, she asks her if this chick's home and then they say no, like, go away. Mm. And then this random shit happens, like, they try to, well, they get into the house and, but, but they've got these masks on and the thing is, it fucks with you because it's so realistic mm. because it's something that can actually happen like where with a paranormal movie you're just like okay you know what i don't feel ghosts in my house so i'm good yeah but with you get people that psycho enough to break in and torment you well it's like not the, even want to steal what's anything that fucking movie with keanu reeves <laughs> <laughs> that's 
was just... I know, I keep talking about... That I can't was just remember wrong in so many ways. Um, I can't remember the gonna, name. It's going to bug me. I'm going to look for it just now. Um, I don't have my laptop in front of me. Holy crap. But yeah, anyway. Um, and Jeepers Creepers as well, like... Yeah, it was alright. Oh, but you know what? You know what I find funny though. I, I saw this meme on Facebook a while back, and it said that this is the twenty seventh year, like when it wakes up and it feeds. You know, twenty twenty. What's next? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so those movies as being uh, tormented by the unknown, not knowing which they which way it'll come at you, and completely thrilling to watch. Ironically, they are cheap to make. I say. Uh, Mr. Movie Maker, spend your budget on good scripts and actors, and the scary movie is a success. Wow. All right. Um, quit CGI and in your face gut spilling and give me a real terror. The unknown. Okay, so this is just like a, I don't know, it's a bit of a, a pre do to this, to the whole backstory thing. So it's not like long still. Um, when I saw this movie, uh, though the script was atrocious, the acting miserable, and the humor a huge clunker. I did appreciate the ghosts themselves. I would rather have 13 individual movies about each ghost, which mm. I do agree. Um, it, it, like Netflix, there's a series for you. Yes, guys. Like Just saying. Some dude in America, I don't know if you're having fucking chicken wings or Dunkin' Donuts or something, <laughs> but like, start writing scripts, bro. <laughs> um, the individuality got lost in the muddled plot line. Yes. And I actually do agree with that. Below, I've listed the ghosts and their stories from Wikipedia. By the way, the 13th ghost was the hero's dead wife, an innocent lure for the ultimate sacrifice to kill himself and make a black magic spell come to fruition. No, or some shit. There was a 14th ghost, which they didn't talk about, which was the dad, because he would sacrifice himself but to save his children. But it wasn't me the 13th one. No, he was the 14th was only, one. Because it was only 12 of them. No, he was the 14th one. We're gonna because the page this. was Oh, no, they've got numbers here. Yeah, but I I think in the movie the page was torn out out of the book. Uh, okay. That chick, that chick like, that got smashed this, yeah. because she was a bitch. Yeah, anyway. She played Miss Honey and Matilda. I'm sorry. <gasps> really, is it her? <laughs> I, had, I, 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 like, I just need to say that I had the biggest crush on that woman when right? I saw Matilda for the first time. I was like, Sarah can you be my teacher? <laughs> Okay, so the firstborn son. The firstborn son is the ghost of Billy Michaels, a boy who was a fan of cowboy films. One day, a neighbor found a real steel arrow in his parents' closet. What the fuck are they doing with an arrow in the closet? Anyway, he challenged Billy to a duel which Billy, with Billy using a toy gun. However, this plaything was no match for the arrow, and he died with the na- when the neighbor shot it through the back of his head. In death, Billy was in his cowboy suit and holding a tomahawk. With the arrow still protruding from his head, the ghost whispers, "I want to play." No, fuck off. Um, okay, but let's just say this neighbor's a dick. Yo, why would you shoot at a child with a fucking steel <laughs> arrow? <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so uh, the torso. The torso is a ghost of a gambler called Jimmy the Gambler Gambino. Then they've also said that it was um it was a woman. I think her name was supposed to be Jenny. So I think this this is actually a load of a rubbish. Um, but anyway, he's no, made most. In the movie, it was a dude. It was a dude. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think they're gonna have a. Well, I can't really say that because I mean exactly. You know, <laughs> do you guys see this the bathroom scene? <laughs> like, come on. Anyway, so he spent most of his days on the track making bets and brainwashed into winning. One day, he made a deal with a rich businessman, and so sealed his fate. When he bet heavily on a boxing match and lost, he tried to... Here we go, big word. <laughs> Fuck sex. Let me see. Come on, man. It's actually not a big word, like for some he reason. tried to what? That. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to renege his bet? Probably, and spill out of town. The mob and the winning boxer... To whom he owed money. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the random background music. That was not planned, but it's cool. Um, he tried... Uh, no, I'm not fucking reading that again. Um, so the mob and the winning boxer, to whom he owed money, caught up with Gambino and cut him into several pieces, wrapping them in cellophane and dumping the corpse into the ocean. He's going to fucking float. The ghost is just a torso trying to walk around on its hands while his head lies nearby screaming with the self cellophane. But he's gonna float. 
I don't really care for that, dude. I mean, if you want to gamble, that's on you, bro. I, you know, put rocks on him or some shit. <laughs> Alright. Uh, the Bound Woman. Uh, the Bound Woman was a cheerleader named Susan Legro, who was born privileged and had a penchant, I think it was, for seducing men and tossing them away. This left a long trail of broken hearts. When her boyfriend found her cheating, he strangled her and killed her and killed the other boy. He buried her body at the 50-yard line of the local football field. The boy, the boyfriend was convicted and sentenced to death. Before his execution, he was quoted saying, The bitch broke my heart, so I broke her neck. Her ghost is in her prom dress, hanging suspended by, by the strangling implements with her arms tied behind her back. I don't know. Well, just what like a dick. Looking at her history, she probably thought he was trying to get kinky or Why something. Why can't he just be like any other normal person and just go and date her best friend? Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like a thing these days, you eh? You think... Like, in the middle of the foot football field, like, that's making a statement. That's like wanting to get caught. I don't know, maybe it was his idea. Anyway. So, obviously, this this is a load of... This is, this is probably not true. Um... So the withered, the withered lover is Jean Criticos, Arthur's wife. She was buried, or she, sorry, fuck. She was burned severely, saving her family from a devastating house fire and later died of her wounds in hospital. Her ghost initially appears in a hospital gown hooked up to an IV pole and showing severe burns on her face. Unlike the other ghosts, she is not a vengeful spirit, electing to help her family rather than show malevolence. At the end of the movie, she appears fully healed, and in her normal clothing. So obviously that was just something probably... I don't know. They probably did for the movie itself. I don't know. What do you mean it's blood of... That's what happened in the movie? Yeah, no. But I mean, like... I don't think it's like a... a you know, real story. Maybe it was just something... Yeah, but they, if you truly love someone and you pass away, you'll always be like their guardian angel. Yeah, I, I get that. But I mean, like... But um, I, I believe in that. Like, totally. Because, I mean... You, Someone needs to look after y'all if I'm dead. This is probably going to be me. We can barely look after you know, each other as it is. Confronting you guys like, this is what you need to text. Or, you know. <laughs> right, so, um, number five. The Torn Prince is the ghost of Royce Clayton. Born in 1940, who was, gifted with, who was a gifted baseball star in high school. Um... I think it's Al Bates, I don't know, with attitude issues and superiority complex. In 1957, he was challenged by a greaser named Johnny to a drag race, but was killed in his car when, as his car spun out of control and flipped over. The cause of the accident was a cut brake line. He was buried in, the, in a plot of earth that overlooked the, base, the baseball diamond. His ghost carries a baseball bat, and in the background, in his cube, his cube is... Man. And in the background, in his cube, his wrecked car can be seen. Half of his body is torn to shreds from when he was dragged underneath, under the car. Okay, was he buried with his car? No. Now how the hell does a ghost carry around a fucking car? I don't know, it's probably like a, <laughs> like a death echo kind of vibe. Ten to one. Yes. I don't know, for people who don't know what a death echo is, it's basically, as they would say... It's a spirit that hasn't um, <clears throat> moved on and they that keep really living, living their death. last few minutes or moments. Yeah. Or if you watch Supernatural, you'll know. <laughs> okay, so number six. The angry princess is Dana Newman, who did not believe in her own natural beauty. <clears throat> Abusive boyfriends fueled her with low self-esteem, which led to much unneeded plastic surgery for imagined defects. Eventually, she got a, a job working for a plastic surgeon, getting paid in treatments rather than cash. Honey, fuck. Alone at the clinic one night, she tried to perform a surgery on herself, but would, but wound up blinding herself in one eye and permanently mutilating herself wow, beyond saving. Up. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Told you, this always fucking happens. Um, she committed suicide in a bathtub by slashing her body repeatedly with a butcher knife. Jeez, that's fucking extreme. When she was found, people noted that she was as beautiful in death as she had been in life. Her ghost is naked, still carrying a knife, the knife that she killed herself with, and showing all the wounds. And the inside of her walls in her cube are splattered with her blood. 
In the bathroom scene, the phrase, I'm sorry, is visible on the floor in blood. Subtitles also reveal that the blurred hissing speech that announces her arrival is her whispering, I'm sorry. This was written on her suicide notes. When her cube opens, she advances toward, toward Ben Moss, who backs up into an open doorway to get away from her and is killed when it snaps shut on him. That was actually fucking funny. Oh, when he got spit in half. No. That was funny. Um, the Podromus is the ghost of Isabella Smith, an English woman who traveled across the Atlantic, Atlantic and settled in New England during the colonial times. She was an outsider to the town she moved into, and this isolated her from other townsfolk. She was found guilty of witchcraft after livestock began to die mysteriously when she emerged from a burning barn completely unharmed. She was sentenced to, to the stocks with no food or drink until she died. As a ghost, she is still locked in her stocks. That fucking sucks. Well, I would probably also, you know, like get out of a, a burning barn, barn, like unharmed, because I'd run like fucking hell. Yeah, but like, those, I don't know. Yeah, you know, in those times it was those a days. If you, if that happened, you're a witch. Yeah, and if you like, you know, I don't know if you were seen like watering your garden or some shit as well. So it was only for the men, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can't do that if you're a woman because you're a witch. Anyway, so number eight and nine. Um, the Great Child and the Dire Mother. So the Dire Mother is the ghost of Margaret Shelburne, who was an attraction in the carnival due to her being only three feet tall. Uh, she was raped by the tall man, as they, like, I don't know, it's here, like, fucking, I, I forgot the function, like, the, the, the name of the punctuation. Anyway, another carnival, carnival freak. Her son, Harold, the Great Child, was born as a result of that rape. He eventually weighed over 300 pounds, which is 136 kilograms. Harold spoiled and raised as his mother's protector and kept a childlike mindset to the point that he wore diapers his entire life. Fucking hell. One day, some of the carnival employees decided to play a little practical joke on Harold and kidnapped his mother. Enraged, he set out to look for her, but when he caught up with the culprits, he found his mother had accidentally suffocated to death in the bag that she was kept in. How the fuck do you accidentally suffocate to death if you are put in a bag? I don't know. Well, you, you, well yeah, you, I've never tried it. I've also, so I, know, I haven't can't really. I haven't been that bored yet. Yeah. Um, Harold killed the kidnappers with an axe, keeping their remains as, and displaying them for paying customers. Wow. <laughs> Later, when the owner of the carnival found out what Harold had done, he ordered a mob of people to tear Harold apart. Their ghosts are always together, and Harold still wields an axe and wears a bib stained with food that has his mother that his mother has spoon fed to him. An alternate version of the story is told on the DVD commentary. DVD, fuck. It was said that their deaths were caused by the grey child rolling over on the dying mother while asleep, thus suffocating her, then him starving to death. Okay. That sounds more plausible. Yeah, that does sound more plausible. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what of the axe, though? Like, where did that come from? Okay, so number 10, the hammer, is the ghost of an African-American blacksmith, George Markley, who lived in a small town in the 1890s. He was wrongfully accused of stealing by a white man from his town and then uh, threatened with exile, refused to leave, refused to leave town. A gang led his accuser... Ha Oh, fuck, sorry. A gang led by his accuser hanged his wife and children and burned their bodies. In revenge, George used his sledgehammer to beat the culprits to death. He was then subjected to a cruel form of frontier justice by the townsfolk, being chained to a tree and executed by having railroad spikes driven into his body with his own sledgehammer. As a final touch, they cut off his hand and attached the sledgehammer, handle and all, to the hand that was cut off. His ghost is seen with the railroad spikes protruding from his body and the sledgehammer for a left hand. That's fucked up. I've like, got come no on. comment at all. Um, <clears throat> so, here's our favourite, number 11. The Jackal is the ghost of Ryan Kuhn, who was born in 1887 to a prostitute. Ryan had an insatiable lust for women, rape and murdering prostitutes. Wanting to be cured, he committed himself into... 
bore Hamwood asylum, but after attacking a nurse, he was put in a straitjacket and thrown into a padded room. After years of this imprisonment, he went completely insane, scratching at the walls so violently that his fingernails were torn completely off. Ow. The doctors kept him permanently bound in his straitjacket, trying, tying it tighter when he acted out, causing his limbs to contort horribly. Still fighting to free himself, Ryan gnawed through the jacket until the doctors finally locked his head in a metal cage and sealed him away in a dark basement cell. There he grew to hate any kind of human contact, screaming madly and cowering whenever approached. Cow cowering, rubbish. When a fire this was broke, when he was alive. Yeah, when a fire broke out in the asylum, everyone but Ryan escaped. He chose to stay behind and face the fire. As a ghost, his arms are free from his jacket and the bars of his cage are ripped outwards. The creepy motherfucker. And that guy actually existed. I actually like, did a little bit of research on him. Because he, like, freaks the fuck out of us. Um, so, yeah, no, he actually did exist. Um, then the Juggernaut is the, is the ghost of a serial killer named Horace Breaker Mahoney. Standing seven feet tall, he was, such, he was of such grotesque height and appearance that everyone ostracized him as a child. His mother abandoned him at birth, so his father raised him, putting him to work in the junkyard, crushing old cars. By fucking hand, I don't know. Um, after his father died, Horace was left on his own and soon went mad. He would pick up female hitchhikers and drive them back to his junkyard, then tear them apart with his bare hands and f feed them to his dogs. One day, he picked up an undercover female police officer who called for backup for, SWAT, for a SWAT team to surround the junkyard. Since close combat was impossible, the police instead struck the yard and arrested the giant. Uh, however, Horace broke free from his cuff Three of officers, uh, of yeah, officers, fucking hell, of I don't know what I said. Quickly, the five, five SWAT officers took out their guns and brought Horace down with a hail of bullets. When he finally went down, they shot an extra round into him just to be safe. His ghost still shows bullet holes all over his clothing and the round that finished him. Then there's just like a little thing, you know, if you saw the movie, I'd love to hear which ghost you would be most scared of coming across. For me, it was the Juggernaut. There's a few reasons for it. Most of these were rather benign ghosts in terms of being frightened, frightening, and the torso certainly isn't going to get me. The jackal, although very creepy, is caught in a cage, which makes it awkward for attacking. Uh, no, it's like, just bro, his, his arms head are that's in a cage, not his whole body. Yeah. I think that person got it wrong. <laughs> the hammer is horrifying too, but I figure he's not quick on his feet. As a <laughs> fairly tall woman... I admit I am uncomfortable around any, anything over six foot four tall. This is definitely not me who wrote this because I'm five foot fuck all. Um, yeah, I don't know. Have you guys seen the movie? Like, I, I thought it was brilliant. I still think it is. I'll probably watch it again like another 20 times. Um, yeah, so that's that on that subject. But I've done something else, um, which I thought, you know, seeing as we're doing the whole paranormal vibe thing um i decided to look at and now great my internet's not responding that's brilliant there we go so i decided to look at the 10 most haunted places in south africa so we're keeping it local today nice <laughs> kind of because local is like local is like a ne. um so i've actually got two lists here some of them i'm not going to read all of them from both lists because um yeah, some of them are the same. So the first one I've got here on this list is the Flying Dutchman Wreck at Cape Point. Um, I've actually never heard of that, to be quite honest. I don't know if you have. Nope. Okay, so over the years, uh, lighthouse keepers at the Cape of Good Hope have reported multiple sightings of a ghost ship, the Flying Dutchman, during storms. The famous ship Try to find safe harbor during a terrible storm around the Cape of Good, po Good, Good Hope, but never made it and is now doomed to sail the seas for eternity. This is considered a terrible omen to see the Flying Dutchman while at sea. On a stormy day, make your way to the atmospheric Cape Point and you may spot the famous ghost ship in the eye of the storm. You can also get a ticket to ride the Flying Dutchman. For Holy shit. Hmm. Something at the Cape Point. Um, 
Let's see. I don't know, guys. Like, if any one of you guys have ever been to fucking Cape Town, like, the wind. Yeah, I still thought it was funicular, but I was, I don't know. Funicular. I doubted myself. I don't know. Um, probably, probably not. Yeah, don't don't correct know. us. Just <laughs> accept us. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, the wind in Cape Town, like, on its own is, is a lot, hey? Like, I've, like, seen it literally like it it blows people away i can't even like so i would not have fuck go stand on a mountain looking at the sea when there's a storm in cape town and that is why no one sees it well the people in the lighthouse see it yeah, because they're safe there <laughs> they fucking choice okay so uh, the, the second one i've got here is the ghostly horseman at tokai manor house i have no idea what that is so let's see Okay, on New Year's Eve, be sure to visit Tokai Manor House, set amongst ghostly trees. It is a national monument which has escaped damage from terrible fires and now house, houses the headquarters of the Table Mountain National Park. In the early 1800s... Ooh, fucking hell. I don't know. Like us see. <laughs> I can't Wait. read tonight like normal. Something, it's something about a party. In the yeah. early 1800s, inveterate... Inveterate party, yeah. There we go. Just need to look at that a bit more. Um, Pietrus Mikhail Extian became, one of, became the owner of the house. The house has a dramatic entrance with steep stairs and at one of Extian's r raucous New Year's Eve parties, his son Frederick accepted his father's wager to ride his horse up the staircase and into the dining room. Frederick circled the dining room table on, on horseback before tragedy struck and he Ooh. fell down with his, the stairs with his horse breaking yeah, his I've neck. Heard, I've, I've actually heard, heard, heard of yeah, Someone heard of this. did this. I don't know if it was on a podcast that I listened to or, some paranormal. or something, but someone did an episode on this. He cut off his head or something, right? With um, the horse. Or he fell down the stairs yeah, with no, the horse. Yeah, he fell down the stairs with his, on, on the horse, breaking his neck. And the horse also died. Probably. These days, one can hear a horse, <laughs> a horse galloping at full speed in the forest. And on New Year's Eve, the ghostly rider attempts to ascend the stairs once again. Not a fucking chance. Is he doing it on horseback again? Change to one Probably. like in the Harry Potter. Huh? In the Harry Potter, the ghost that runs around on the horse. Oh, nearly headless neck. There we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've actually been to this place. It is fucking creepy. Um, so, ghostly sightings at my, in Mikey's Fontaine in the Karoo. Um, a beautiful little town, though. It really is nice. But, yeah, the hotel is something else. Um, okay, the splendid Mikey's Fontaine Hotel in the middle of the Karoo is full of ghosts. Yes, it is. You may hear Katie shuffling her cards in Katie's card room or see the ghost known as Lucy wandering around... The negligee. Um, ghostly British soldiers from the Boer War are said to haunt the staircase while the hotel insists that the spirit of the founder of Mikey's Fontaine, James Logan, is still present at the hotel. Just 250 kilometers from Cape Town off the N1, a frighteningly good weekend in Mikey's Fontaine is a few hours' drive away. A few hours' drive away. Like, I've actually... It, it's weird. Like, that place is really fucking freaky at night. Um, I wouldn't know. When I was still working on the train, we we would stop there, obviously, with every single journey that we did to Cape Town and back. So, we get there at night on the way back from Cape Town. And it's... Yeah, that, that like, fucking museum, though. It's... You, you don't go into the basement. There's, like, all kinds of shit down there. It's, like, these old... Um, Soldiers' uniforms and shit. I don't know, that whole place is just eerie. I went down there once and I didn't do it again. Like, mm -mm, no. Um, shoulder tapping ghosts in rust in Friert, Cape Town. Why are all these places in Cape Town? What did you people do there? Because Cape Town is the oldest city in South Africa. In South Africa, yeah, it's the mother city. Uh, be careful when you feel a tap on your shoulder in rust in Friert at Zico Museum in Cape Town. Some say this is the most haunted house in Cape Town. And that's that on that picture. Wow. Like okay, nice. Two full sentences. 
the, this is like an iconic story in in South Africa. So beware the Union Dale hitchhiker. So in Afrikaans we we call it uh, the Spook van Union Dale. Yeah, there's even a movie about yeah. it. Um, so many claim to have picked up a hitchhiker on the lonely road to Union Dale, only to have her disappear mid journey. One motorcyclist said that his bike actually swerved from the shifted heights as a result of her disappearance. And that's also that on that picture, or like on that little story. Um, all right, the helpful hands at the Kimberley Library. So, libra librarians at the Africana Library in Kimberley say that if you request a book, helpful ghosts have been known to knock that book off the shelves onto the floor. Okay. I, I wouldn't read it in. <laughs> I don't know. Nice. Okay. Like, poor book. Like, you're very quiet tonight. Or are I don't you listening know. attentively? I'm listening, but, but I don't know. South Africa's hauntings are interesting. Mm. It's just like, yeah, there's something there, and that's it. Mm. Like, the shit that goes on elsewhere in the world, like, those ghosts got it out for someone. <laughs> like, they have But the ones in South Africa are just like, yeah, I'm here, listen to me shuffling my cards. And they're probably going to ask you for two rand. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck, no. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Can I check the car? No. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> so, spot the ghostly canine at Luminous Spectre at the Castle of Good Hope in Cape Town. Again, fucking Cape Town. Um, Castle of Good Hope. Yes. Castle and there's a K, there's a canine there. Yes, canine. That's a lie because Spectre. that's the one place I've actually been, <laughs> and it's a load of shit. You is go it? in to look at load of shit because the government is not looking after it the way it's supposed to. And I was Surprise. so excited to go into the torture or the basement where they kept everyone, mm. the torture chamber, like they call it. This place. And it's rubbish up. it's fucked up like i was so disappointed my life my life was ruined <laughs> okay so this is what they say on it so centuries of violence and slavery in the cape of good hope castle have left the legacy of disturbed and restless spirits there was no, there's nothing there anything was, that's restless there is the parties that they throw there yeah no i can believe that there was a donker hut or a dark hole where prisoners were held and tortures Consequently, there have been many ghostly That's where sightings. Where fucking was? There's nothing there. I've got a photo of myself standing there. You see the disappointment in my face. I would love to see that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, there have been many ghostly sightings, such as that of a two-meter-tall ghost, which haunts the battlements, striding up and down, semi-luminous and terrifying. There no. are rumors, like. I don't know if you guys know how much drugs there are in Cape Town. Yeah, I'm just exactly. saying. I'm not like, Who wrote this? <laughs> there are rumors that you can spot a large black dog with that will lunge at you, disappearing at the last possible moment. Light switch on and off by an invisible hand. Pay the castle a visit on Halloween if you dare. Apparently don't you even, did. Don't even waste your money, people. Seriously. Okay, number eight. Beware the ghost nurse at Somerset Hospital in Cape Town. Okay, I haven't been there. I haven't been there either. Oh, I've been at Somerset, okay. like, not, no, not, it's, yeah. Somerset West, like, the, the, the train station. But that's just fucking dodgy. Every place to you is dodgy. Have you like, seen honestly, the train stations in South Africa? No, because I don't exactly. drive on the train. <laughs> they fucking dodgy. Everything to you is and dodgy. And they're always on the dodgy side of town. just terrified. Everything to you is dodge. Mm. <laughs> like what? <laughs> exactly. So far, everything on this list has been dodged to you. <laughs> if you have the misfortune to check in at the Somerset Hospital, wow, that's positive. Be on the lookout for a mysterious nurse with white eyes who is said to assist patients then disappear. Mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Sure. White eyes is a no go. Mm -mm. I don't know, I'd probably think it's... Like, guys, come on, just go and read up on this on Google. There's certain ghosts you don't fuck with. That's why they say if you have the white misfortune eyes, of checking into Somerset Hospital. White eyes and red eyes are a massive uh-uh. And beware the ghost knows at Somerset Hospital, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's going to nurse you to death, yeah. <laughs> 
Paranormal Paranoia at Greenpoint Lighthouse in Cape Town. Oh my soul, is it? Again. Can no, you wait, just get out actually, of the Western Cape? I'm trying to, this is not me. Jeez, like, I no. found this just before we started. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. Okay, so... The one-legged ghost, Daddy West, the ghost of the lighthouse keeper, is known to haunt the tower yes, of the Green Daddy. Point Lighthouse. <laughs> Why? Well, that'd be rude to probably tell him to go break a leg, wouldn't it? Don't break a leg. Again. <laughs> okay, heartbreak at the Nottingham Road Hotel in KZN. What? I know it's not in the Western Cap, but you can away from the sea point where we don't I'm live. I'm trying. <laughs> Okay, so when you stay at Nottingham Road Hotel, tucked into the rolling green hills of the Kaiserlin Midlands, be prepared to encounter a ghostly Charlotte. Charlotte is a heartbroken ghost who is said to have been in love with a British soldier, soldier who died on, a, on the battlefield. She was so, so grief-stricken that she flung herself over the balcony at the hotel to her untimely death. A less savoury account has it that she was the lady of the night who fell victim to a client who would not pay and then pushed her out of pushed her to her death. Well, that's fucking rude. Well, we've got it from a private source that it is fucking haunted. Yeah, well, and the Midlands itself is quite beautiful, but well, so we know six someone who stayed in their room twice. Someone's got balls. <laughs> I want to go. No. Charlotte is said to be is to be fuck man. Charlotte is said to be fond of tidying and will rearrange flowers and objects in your room, and she may even pull your toes while you are sleeping. Why would you want to do that? Did she do one of those to you? Okay. <laughs> Did she move your shit? Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep either. <laughs> yeah. So um, our source just told us that she didn't sleep. <laughs> so. No toe yanking happened there. And then there's another one here, but um, okay, I'm just going to skip some of this shit because here we go, dude. Here's one in Pretoria, like fucking down the road from us. Okay, I'm listening. So Smith's house in Irene. Um, so Irene is like, what, five, five minutes from here? Okay. So while it's young Smith's who lived there, who lived here, it's the family who owned the house before him that haunts this joint. Legend has it that Smith's wife and many other visitors to the house reported report seeing an old man walking the grounds and in the bedrooms. Pervert? Yeah. Why? <laughs> like, I would get a slight heart attack if I was getting out the shower and turn around, there's an old man in my room. Yeah, that's not fun. No. It's not a fun time. No, I couldn't. I, I, I wouldn't imagine it is. And here's another one for you, dude. So, but this is like probably one of the most famous like haunted places in South Africa. Actually, is Kempton Park Hospital. Yeah, but it used they to be. say it's not the same anymore because it's oh, been vandalism is a vandalized, thing. Vandalized, and there's bums sleeping there. Mm. And I still like, wanted to go so bad, and then they told me that, and I'm like, well, I value my life. I saw like <laughs> YouTube videos of South Africans, obviously South Africans going in there, but like, I mean, they're also fucking big mouth. And then there's like a, a, a mouse or some shit that runs across the floor. No, there is actually their one video, mm -hmm. but no one paid attention to it because they were idiots. Yeah. Um, where the camera was going down the hallway mm -hmm. and they had that all the torches were going down, but they were talking to each other. And you can actually see like a black shadow ahead didn't we watch come that out of a doorway what look at them go back in come back out look at them for a while and then go back in didn't we watch that i'm sure we did uh probably i don't know i can't remember i think i've watched it with a few people because i like to scare the crap out of people <laughs> so uh, about the hospital no haunted list is complete without an abandoned hospital in it of course not the hospital has, a, has long been a hotspot for paranormal enthusiasts. The hospital was closed at one day, a day after Christmas in 1996. Abruptly. Yeah. No one knows why. Some equipment was moved from the hospital, but much of it remained, including the patient files. There were plans to refurbish the hospital, but to date it has not happened. 
Ghosts from the psychiatric ward are apparently the most mischievous. Mischievous. Fuck. Yeah, because they're crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm trying to stay away from the coast, so. <laughs> so, uh, Karoo National Park. A local legend tells stories of a water ghost who lures livestock into a deep pool where they eventually drown. The numerous what? unmarked graves in the area adds to an air of creepiness. Why? I don't know. That's a dick move. It is a pretty much that's pretty much a dick move. Yes. Um, okay, this is Port Elizabeth, but I'm going to read it anyway. So, Fort Frederick. Fort Frederick is the earliest permanent structure still in existence in Port Elizabeth. The ghosts here are reportedly of a theatrical kind and even host their own Shakespearean play. Yo. <laughs> Why? Why are you? <laughs> Dead people playing Shakespeare. Uh-uh. No. no. That's taking him to a whole new level. <laughs> Yo. Um, okay, so the old presidency in Bloemfontein. The stables here are said to be haunted with several people. From people moving carriages from the stables to a resident dog and, a hi and high school children from when the building was a school and a hostel. The fuck happened there? So yeah, that's it. It's like, a, I've just got uh, this one here on Nottingham Road. Or oh, sorry, the Nottingham Road Hotel. Then again, the Flying Dutchman ghost ship at Cape Point. So yeah, that's that's it for South, haunted South African places. I don't know, do you know of like any other things that you think should have been on this list, maybe? Or the Stanley Marks Museum. I was thinking the same thing. Like, that place is fucking creepy. It's, um... That place is just... I don't know. It's fucking eerie. I've been there twice. Like, I think once was with you, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, and once with you. Something touched me while we were waiting to go inside. Yeah. Remember, because my whole one arm was It was, was just, like, just goosebumps. Goosebumps. And, uh... Like... And then we heard that whistling sound yeah, the whistling. From coming from the attic. Yeah, because you're not allowed to go into the attic for some reason. But it, like, you know, Apparently like a, it's unstable. Everything is fucking unstable. <laughs> South Africa, guys, come on. Um, but yeah, like, it, it, you know, like these, these fucking little whistles you get in, I don't know what you guys like call it. Those whistles that the kids usually play with. Yeah. You, you know what it reminds me of? I don't know if you had one as a kid. Um, it came on a little stick. Mm. like a plastic stick mm. and it was it looked like a little just a straight line that goes over it and then you twirl it around yeah. and then it makes that whistle sound yes it yes yes it reminded me of that oh uh, yeah so I don't know and that place was it, creepy though yeah and then and I'm not talking about the picture the of the second time I was there was with Johan mm. and I was sitting in you know where she said the old guy died oh in the bedroom yeah yes. I was not sitting on the bed but I was I was standing in the room and mm. Johan just looked at me and she's like, You need to get out now. <laughs> and you know Johan has the spawn with the helmet. Yes. Because he sees everything. So I was just like, Oh shit, not taking anything home with me tonight. So Yeah, I'm like we don't need that. Let's not have a, a replay but of Have you seen a photo of that dude that lived there? That old Sammy guy. Marks. No, or the, the old, old guy that lived there because it was his donkey. I was about to say, wasn't he standing next to like a cow or something? A donkey. <laughs> he looks... No. <laughs> but he wasn't like a like a hectic dude or anything though. No, but he looks just like... If I see him in the middle of the night, I'll get a fucking heart attack. I'm sorry. Because he looks like like Santa Claus that lost a few Ks. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, you know... It's basically, yes. Yeah. It's a good description. And then they also say that one kilom kilometer tunnel... Yes. That runs between the two hospitals. Mm. It's apparently also haunted. I don't know. I've never been there. Mm. I just feel any fucking, anything to do with a prison or a hospital, you're fucked. Not fucked. Just no, not like, yeah, but, it, yeah, there's shit's going on there. Because you, it's usually places where people died mm. in traumatic instances. I don't know. I'm just warning you, I don't care how I die, I'm still going to haunt the shit out of you. I'm probably going to go before you. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck with that. Um, and what's it, uh, like, actually, it's just, like, up the road from us, the Fort Tracker Monument. I don't they know. They say that place one. is also quite haunted. Oh, yes, yes. Um, we got that shit goes down. Source. What did he say? 
I can't remember what he said exactly, but because he told us we looked like we're I having a party, but we were fucking in pajamas. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I still need. I need to go and listen to his voice notes again because I can't really remember what he said mm. right now. Because he said a lot. <laughs> But yeah, that's also where we got the info from the one kilometer tunnel, tunnel. situation. But like, there's also this this tour that they do in Pretoria. Um, what's it? Oh, we actually read about it that same night. It's like it's like a ghost. Okay, place. yeah, but we're not doing advertising for people. So guys, if you want to go, just go and Google it. Yeah, like I'm look. I'm because not going to mention the name because I don't getting, remember it. We're, still, <laughs> we're not getting paid yet for doing advertisement. So no, not doing that. <laughs> Yeah, like um, like I said, I can't even I can't even mention it because I don't remember the name, but I just know that it's it like travels to some haunted locations and there's like, what's that other fucking house? It's also quite close to us, in Alderain. Uh, uh it's the, like no, it's called the Erasmus Castle. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna I don't know how, how, how like how long we've been talking. Um, but it's not open to the public no, anymore no. because that big place next to it I can't remember what's the name. But they're using it for their archive storage. Well, that's fucking rude. I actually did research on it the other day because I wanted to talk about it. And I'm like, oh, this is boring. (laughs) Because (laughs) it's boring because they don't go into detail like what goes on to place and what's what what. I've actually, I don't know if it was actually someone standing there. Like I'm talking about like flesh and blood or if it was something else. But I've actually what are you seen. Talking about? No, I've actually seen a woman standing on the porch. No, but they do actually say there was a picture where they say there is a woman that lingers on the porch or inside the house, mm. like in the window. The window. Yeah, I've seen that actually. Yes. So just an interesting thing, like I heard it today. You know, once I listened to, okay, I'm gonna do advertising for them because I think they're fucking amazing. Um, if you guys want to listen to any other podcast. Um, and that's why we drink. They are, it's two chicks, but they're fucking hilarious. I love them. Isn't three of them? No, it's only two. Is it only two? Um, the third one you're thinking of is their PA. Oh. Or their assistant or whatever. So, um, do you see now I lost my, oh, today they were doing listener stories. Like, we want to do, but you guys don't want to talk to us. So, you know. No advice. Um, so there's this one story that came in. Where this chick is wanted by a neat ghost. Um, I need one of those. Where the ghost actually makes her bed, but that's fucking sweet. Steals her cutlery, <laughs> her silver. That's counterproductive. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, do I not want to make my bed for the rest of my life, or do I actually want to fork in my? In my drawer. You're just gonna go and get plastic sporks and everywhere. I was like, you know what? It's fine, I'll make my own bed. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, it's just like a picture of a house. It's actually it's it's quite fucking stunning. Um and it was actually a quite a big property. Yeah, it's massive. Um it was bigger when it when the guy I don't know what the guy was doing is when he bolted because his son excuse me, actually built his own house on the same property. But they had to walk forever to get to each other. Oh, and there was a cool. graveyard as well. Yeah. So there's like a short little article. I'm just going to read through it quickly. So if you are not familiar with the history of Pretoria, then you probably won't know about this historical building in Erasmus Kloof. Erasmus Castle was built during 1892 and was officially... Oh my gosh, I don't know why I always get myself into these situations. And it's probably inaugurated, I think, in 1903 with a church service. Oh my gosh, this guy's name. Can I? Jeez, he must be fucking, I don't know, like German or something. That dude. Your Chemus, <laughs> Erasmus, Johannes or something, just, I don't we know. We just got to call him Johannes, it's fine. Johannes Erasmus. <laughs> <laughs> it's Afrikaans, you know. <laughs> Building a better home for him and his wife turned into something much bigger, a castle. It was believed that the Erasmuses got funding for their castle by trading with the English. 
Okay, okay, guys, just a quick, if you are not from South Africa and you haven't driven past this place, it doesn't look like a castle, it just looks like a house. Mm. Um, but in those days, they apparently thought of it to be a considered. castle. Like, I think the Sammy Marks Museum would rather have been considered as a castle because it's much bigger. No, yeah, well, we haven't really been inside. We're not allowed to. Yeah, but if you see, see it from the outside, from the outside you can yeah, drive yeah, right like, it's around. It's huge. No, not Sammy Marks. I'm talking about the Erasmus. Yeah, me too. No, it's not that huge. Oh, it's if not. you take a good look at it, it's not that huge. It's mm -hmm. just because it's, on, it's two stories and the way the roof has been built. Look, I'm, I'm giving the guy kudos for building that roof back then. But the no, way the roof stands, it man. probably looks like, looked like a castle. And that's why they dunked it. Erasmus Castle. Anyway. Um, this is fucking hell. Curtains and decorations was imported from England. Today, the castle belongs to Arms Corps and is not... There, that's the place. That's the guy. And is not accessible <laughs> to the public at all. Yeah, because they're dicks. Yeah. But tales of ghosts <laughs> are still doing the rounds. After the 1950s movie, Yish uns wir. So here we are again. Okay, so can we just... We can we just, watch that. Can we just quickly... Like, you know, Arms Corps is probably, you know, BE... Yes. And I'm not, I'm not being racist right now. Let me just you give let it. me just give a disclaimer there. Like we know, because Ursula that works with me will agree with me on mm. this. Like us white people, we're stupid. Okay, we go to places <laughs> that's fucking haunted. It's like so twenty no, people have died. Let's move they in. archive their stuff there. Mm. Now imagine this poor oak needs to go and get some stuff that's archived, mm. and he's an intern, so he doesn't know, and then shit happens. Bro, I would quit. Like, immediately. Would you really? No. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> but there is people that's smarter than us. <laughs> okay, so after the 1950s movie, here we are again, or Hier uns wir, that was shot at the dilapidated Erasmus Castle, uh, stories of the ghost started doing rounds. Without knowing the history of the historical building, we can't even begin to understand the full value of what the castle offers. Because we're not allowed to fucking go in there. Shortly, I don't know why they didn't make it a museum as well. No, they should have actually. Shortly after this castle was built, till today it remains one of South Africa's best preserved Victorian art Nova, Nova homes, I think. See, it's not a castle. It's a home. Mm -hmm. Just saying. It only cost £7,500 to build at the time. Van der Ben, a Dutch architect in collaboration with an Italian builder, Montebello made the castle a reality. Erasmus Castle goes against the style of Southern Hemisphere building where houses face north. The castle faces south, which makes it cool in the summer and even colder in the winter. Oh, that's fucking nice. Although the castle has been restored by Arms Corps, all the or origin pine floors are still origin. Oregon, sorry. Pine floors are still original. The furniture is not original Erasmus furniture, but all date back to the period. The fireplaces and the giant front door remains un unchanged and, the sh and shows the immaculate taste of Johannes Erasmus. <laughs> <laughs> the top floor of the castle consists of a music room where, the church, where, where church services were held and a nursery. Other rooms in the castle include a men's smoking room with Johannes Erasmus' original roll-top roll desk, a guest room, a ladies' drawing room, a main dining room, a main bedroom, and three other bedrooms, a cross passage, a breakfast room, and pantry, one bathroom slash toilet, and a kitchen. The castle is not accessible to the general public, but special arrangements for cultural and historical interest groups can, however, be made to visit the terrain. Okay, suddenly we are a historical group. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> but yeah, so there's some South African history. Um, some yeah, South African paranormal history. Um, and I think we, we yeah, we actually out of time. Not yeah, like you talk really... a lot. Like it's a not lot. me. It's like the it's the articles. Have you heard yourself talk? No, exactly. <laughs> but I get compliments that people love my voice. So I don't care. <laughs> not you guys. I'm being I'm being biased towards myself right now anyway <laughs> let's get off the subject with me 
So yeah, that's it for, for tonight or this morning, wherever you are, where, whatever time you are listening to this. Basically, um, that's it for this episode. Yes. <laughs> why do you complicate your own life? Because it's, I'm fucking tired, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, yeah okay, so, yeah, so guys, we'll speak to you guys again whenever. Can um, reach out to us if you want to us to talk about anything else. Just yeah. Saying. Definitely. But yeah, that is it from us. Have a good one, you guys. Hope you enjoyed. And we have not molested your virgin ears. <laughs> wow, dude. I didn't mean it like that. That's positive. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Okay, I'm just going to say bye. Because okay, bye. <laughs> it's, it's, getting, it's getting hectic here, guys. Is it getting hectic? Yeah. It is? Oh. Okay. Okay, okay bye. bye.